Hello everybody and welcome back to another spooky video. Today we are going to be returning back to interior in a movie with a very spook- I, I guess it's not like super spooky but he's technically considered a horror- horror-like monster I guess. A classic horror monster. So today for the anniversary of the musical at least we are going to be talking about the Phantom of the Opera. It's one of my favorite musicals. I have read the book also and I'm just, I love it. I love the story. Love it, love it so much. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about that today and building a room based off of the, the, the themes and all that jazz. <laughs> and something I want to add with my interior in the movie series, if you are just interested in watching me speed build a room and not not really interested in me blabbing about. I know some of you don't like to hear me talk. You think I sound like a Karen. Okay, <laughs> I get it. So I I invite you all to um, mute the video and play whatever music you want. I just really could use the watch time on this series. Hey, <laughs> that would help me out a bit. So hey, that's something you can do, just letting you know. So I'm going to be talking about Phantom of the Opera. It's, ooh, it's <laughs> 1912, I believe, was when the novel came out, and then it was popularized in 1986 by the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. They had a regular adaption. There's been so many adaptions over the years. We're actually going to go into my favorite, my top five Phantom of the Opera adaptions. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to start out at number five, which is, okay, so these first couple, let me just preface this, is going to be pretty much based on more nostalgic values <laughs> rather than whether or not they are actually kind of like good, good tier adaptions. Like, <laughs> let me just say, this is person my personal top five is what we're going through today. <laughs> so, at number five is... Goosebumps Phantom of the Auditorium. So I, I'm a 90s kid. I grew up with Goosebumps. <laughs> that was like the scary thing to watch. The, if you get in the October vibes going, yes, Goosebumps. I know some of you have probably already seen my outro, <laughs> which, which is great. Like skip to the end for the outro. Just, I love... <laughs> I love the Goosebumps, A, eh? and I'll probably do another interior and a movie based off, like, my top 10 Goosebumps episodes, if you guys are interested in that. But, yeah, Phantom of the Auditorium, I feel like that one is, it's pretty good. Like, they can't use, like, I think there's still weird copyrights, so they don't say, like, it's Esmeralda instead of Christine, and uh, her father's not dead, he runs the theater, so... A bit of like a story mix up, but they're basically the premise is a bunch of kids doing a version of Phantom of the Opera, and of course, a phantom shows up. And it, I don't want to like spoil it, but it actually has some pretty like the twist is unexpected. I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, but I really like that one also. Honorary mention, but not on the list, Phantom of the Megaplex. <laughs> <laughs> the Disney Channel original movie, Phantom of the Megaplex. That one just has such a weird premise, but I, I love it. Just like Phantom of the Opera, except at a movie theater. <laughs> yeah, so those two. Yes. And then also going on the nostalgia list is Wishbone. I don't know if everybody remembers Wishbone. <laughs> it was this dog who went through a bunch of literary stories. And was like a little actor in the story, so it was very cute. I was like, this is where my interest in literature showed up. <laughs> Wishbones. The reason I'm an English major? The dog Wishbone, eh? <laughs> yeah, and they did a Phantom episode, and that was pretty good. So, A, shout out to 90s nostalgia. It's it's all good, yo. But, yeah, I, I, I just, ooh, loving that dog. I'm just thinking about the dog now. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to like the actual like serious adaptations is my top three and number three is Phantom of the Paradise which ooh I don't remember the exact year but it was definitely the 70s so it's kind of like 
if you mix like Rocky Horror. It's basically like Rocky Horror except Phantom of the Opera. And I'm like, yes. So I got a couple of tracks from those. I just, I love the music because my mom's favorite musical is Rocky Horror. And I, I kind of like grew up, she was very in that like 70s grunge, like 80s thing, rock phase. So I was just like, I kind of grew up around that. I was like, yes, Phantom of the Opera except Phantom <laughs> of the paradise. Hey, so that's a pretty good adaptation. I like that one a lot. And it's Burb Phantom. His, his mask is a little, it's a little out there, but I still love it. And let's move on to number two. Number two on my list is Yeston and Copet's Phantom, which was a play that came out around the same time as the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. Except it's, the songs kind of, um, they were a little bit more to, like, a classic opera rather than kind of, like, fake opera-ish. <laughs> no offense to Andrew Lloyd Webber, like, I love those songs, if you can't tell. But yeah, those songs are also, like, really good. It's a really good, it kind of plays more on the Phantom as, like, a, a character. Like, they go into a little bit more of his, like, backstory, and... There's a 1990s film ad adaptation with Charles Dance, which is probably why that sounds so familiar. So, 1990 uh, adaptation, Charles Dance, he's Ginger Phantom. <laughs> like, yes, Ginger Phantom. And there's this, like, beautiful moment that's hilarious where he takes off his mask. There's nobody around. He takes it off. And there's another mask underneath the mask. I'm just like, I can't, I can't even with you. <laughs> yeah, so that, that one's really good. The music is a little, they just go, they use more, they don't actually use the songs from the play, Yeston and Copet's play. They use kind of just classic opera songs, which that's, it's, it's okay, it's okay, you know not ad every adaptation is perfect, but I hope they do, if they were going to do a true adaption, I hope someday, someday we get those songs. Because <laughs> it actually has really good music and I'm upset because it's like, it's super underrated. <laughs> and it's my number two pick. So I know I've, the Charles Dance one is definitely on YouTube. I've seen it in parts like all over. If you want to go watch it, it's highly recommend because it's, it's good. And, of course, <laughs> I don't know if you could already guess, but my top uh, Phantom of the Opera adaptation is the 1986 Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. I mean, you can't, you can't not, guys. Like, I, it's kind of what brought Phantom, like, out of obscurity, kind of, because... I, I don't, it's, it's good. It might, it's probably not for everybody. I'm like, but it's good. I, I love the songs. When I was studying abroad in London, both in 2016 and 2019, I went to go see it. Then I think actually in 2015 is when the U.S. tour came by. And they, they messed up so many things in the U.S. tour. <laughs> Only true theater fans and phantom nerds. They like... Okay, the biggest, the biggest, biggest tragedy ever was Christine's outfits. They, oh, whew, <laughs> let me just, yeah. So, my mom's a fashion designer, so I have a whole history with, like, costuming and just, like, I'm a big, I'm a big, like, costume nerd. So, in the 2000 for movie and the U.S. tour, they somehow managed to, like, scuff up the costumes. Uh, with the tour, it actually wasn't, like, it wasn't noticeable, I swear, for every other costume except for Christine's star princess dress, which she dances in the masquerade in this, like, incredible, like, gradient dress that's all, like, it's like, whoa, whoa, queen, it's beautiful. But they totally, like, it's got, like, puffy and tulle. I just, I, go look up pictures of it and look up pictures of the U.S. version. Because it was complete garbage. They, like, took out all the magic. Like, the U.S. tour was differently staged and everything. It, like, it didn't bother me. 
the only thing that bothered me about that tour was that dress. <laughs> It's like, this dress is garbage. Where is my star princess dress? So yeah, that's definitely my favorite one of Christine's costumes. I Another costume that I like is Trident Girl in the Masquerade, which is a reference like nobody gets. <laughs> I follow this whole like costume blog on Tumblr who just does Phantom of the Opera <laughs> costumes. I'm like, yes, this is what I need. But yeah, so... Star Princess, definitely up there. Triton Girl, also up there. Oh, yeah. No, so... So, comparing that to the 2004 movie, costumes is really where it also scuffs me about the 2004 movie with Gerard Butler and Emmy Rossum. 2004 movie also had other problems with singing. Gerard Butler can't sing. I'm sorry, he just can't. Yeah, so that's why people don't like to talk about the 2004 movie. <laughs> it's garbage, guys. Like, they're specifically with the masquerade scene, they like everybody's like all the colors, and there's when literally they changed all the costumes so they're no colors. So they're singing about like all the colors and how magical. <laughs> there's there's none of that. Like Christine's the only one, and she's wearing like a pale like muted pink. I'm like, are you serious, guys? Why? Just, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life, <laughs> Joel Schumacher? Like, stick to your bad Transformers movies and I, leave Phantom alone. <laughs> yeah, so the musical seriously needs, like, a good adaptation, but they are... The show must go on is actually... I know they just did one. They're planning to do one, like, on the 9th, but... I think they should save that for Phantom's anniversary, which is hopefully when I get this video out. Hey! But yeah, the 25th anniversary, I love Sierra, Bogues, and Raymond, they're just perfect. So if you haven't seen Phantom and you want to go see, like, want to watch the musical, you you gotta go with the 25th anniversary film, like, which they filmed at Royal Albert Hall. And it was, it was, it was a little chaotic in some parts. They had to deal with a lot of, uh, things. I know there's, like, stage lights. There's, like, oh, God. They had to, like, act their bath. Like, the background had to be digital because the, like, they weren't at their, like, home theater. So they couldn't, like, have, like, their usual, like, backgrounds and, like, props. And, like, they couldn't drop the chandelier on the crowd. Yeah, I sat, actually, in the 20, not 2019, 2016, I sat directly under the chandelier. So... I was like, I was all like scrunched up in my seat. I was like, oh, <laughs> I almost got hit. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty good. But yeah, I'm just nerd out about Phantom. E. Uh, what else did I think? I want, so yeah, those are most of my problems with the 2004 movie. Like, I feel like it was shot well. It was staged pr pr pretty well. Uh. The 2004 just had problems, it was, most of the problems came from the singing and the, <laughs> oh god, yeah, the singing and the costumes are my biggest problems with the 2004 of adaptation, but a Royal Albert Hall really came in clutch, so definitely check those out. I, <laughs> I definitely don't have, like, a top five musical actresses and actors. I don't go that far, but I do like Raymond Carmelo and Sierra Bogues. And then the 2019 cast, which had Tim ha Tim Hauer and Amy Manford, like, they were really good. I think a Amy Manford was actually an alternate for Christine, but I saw her the night that she was alternating, and I was like, wow, that's peak Christine, like, 10 out of 10. <laughs> but, yeah. I, so I've seen the play three times and I'm not sick of it. I have yet to see it on New York because haven't been to New York. My sister's in New York right now and she doesn't like musical theater and I'm like, You're, uh, New York is wasted on you. <laughs> like, she's like, oh yeah, I'm going to New York. I'm like, oh, what are you planning to do? And she's like, I don't know. I'm like, you, you, because you, you, she lived in New York too. I'm like, I can't believe you. <laughs> Yeah, but I, hopefully I'll get to New York. I have family in New York because my mom's from New York and she doesn't like Broadway either. I'm like, okay, how did I come? How how am I the odd one in 
the situation. <laughs> but enough about my family weirdness. Let's talk about this room. So I've got Thomas the Phantom. I have little Marshall as Raoul. And of course, my Nicola shall be the Christine die for this room. I. This room, I think, was really fast to build because I have been working on a Phantom of the Opera room in the basement of Luna's house, which is up in the DA if you want to go see it. The room's not ready yet. I obviously... So I have already, like, planned out a couple things. So I feel like this room was easy to put together. Like, I didn't even really technically need to, like, speed up the footage. <laughs> and so... Yeah, I got a bunch of, like, the candelabras. I have statues, which I felt like were very phantom. I put a treasure chest in there because I was like, hey, gold. He asks all the, the managers for gold. and Or not gold. He's just like, pay me 50,000 francs a month or else. So I put a bunch of money in there. Obviously, the organ was the main portion I was like I got the I gotta have that organ gotta have that dungeon wall and like the cloudy mystical flooring and I also put a horse in there because of the whole 2004 movie having a horse in the sewers which actually was in the book but it was just like a weird detail they brought back for the movie and the street organ was as close as I was probably gonna get to a music, uh, music box so yeah, that's pretty much most of the details. I think in Luna's room, I actually have like the anat anatomical model in there instead of like a skeleton <laughs> playing the organs. I'm like, yee, but it turned out really well. I love all of this. It's good. <laughs> So that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all for joining me once again. I would really appreciate it if you leave a like, a comment, and subscribe, as always. And I will see you all in my next spooky video. I hope you all are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you all next time. Bye bye now.